I'm just going to, it's quite hard to demonstrate this music because by its nature you kind of need to leave it to play for a little bit. Um, I'm going to hit play and I'll just quickly run through some of the settings we've got. I'll leave it fairly quiet because I'm going to speak on top of it. This is the boring bit, so I'll do it quickly. We have a master control panel, and in our master control panel, we can have two states, if like two compositions. I'll demonstrate that towards the end. In the panel, we control the tempo, uh, the volume of the piece. Object is a technical thing. It's, it's similar to polyphony. It's how many if like game voices we need to create for the system. We can define what scale we're going to use. Uh, these scales can be created. You can create whole new scales if you want. Let me bring that down a bit. Okay. Um, and essentially, each one of these is a little bit like a track in a sequencer. A little bit. Okay. It's, it's what we call a channel panel. And those events that you see, so cello drone, that's a wise event. That's, that's simply a label. Right. And that label can refer to a sound. It can re refer to a thousand sounds. It's completely arbitrary. You can think of it in terms of a folder, if you like. So you've created the sounds. You, you tag all these sounds. These are cello sounds, or you know, these are percussion sounds. And that's what pops up in the list. Then you've got density. So that's a way of controlling the number of events that happen over time. So that's you know, the likelihood of something playing. Uh, and it's a beat value. Polyphony is how many notes are allowed to play simultaneously. Spread is where if the system, if your polyphony is greater than one and your system plays more than one sound at once, say it wants to play three sounds, you may not want that. You may want more of an arpeggio. So you put a spread value in there so randomly you start to move the notes apart for you. An octave is the octave range, uh, if like the area on the keyboard where the note will play. If it's zero, it won't pitch shift it at all. It will leave it as I've created it. If I move something down, say minus one, both minus one, it will drop an octave. So I can go up or down octaves. But if the values are not equal, then it will transpose the note according to the scale rule. Okay? So if you know a tiny bit of music theory, if I give it a C, and if I have, say, uh, one as my maximum and zero as my minimum, then that will say I can have a range of one octave anywhere within an octave. So it'll be from C to C octave, according to my scale rule, which in this case is, is minor. Right, so that would be C minor, if my first note was C. Okay. Then we've got volume, so it'll randomize volume, it'll randomize pan, it's a surround panner, obviously we don't have that here, but front, back, surround. And we have a little uh, low pass filter. We can force uh, a channel to play chords, I can solo. That one's just stop playing now. That is playing, but quietly. There we go. And so chords, uh, like with the scale rule, can also be defined. So you can create new chords if you want. Right? And that's all done in the XML. Uh, we haven't put that in the GUI because it's very difficult to, to represent that visually. Density, yeah. Density is the likelihood of an event happening over a period of time, okay. uh, defined in beats. So what I like about a system uh, such as this is that it becomes a compositional tool. Because you, you can't sit at your keyboard and start playing some notes and think, oh, this is a great tune. Right, you know, I'm going to kind of chop it all up and put it into the system that sound, sound awesome. That kind of doesn't, doesn't work that way. You, you need to know what you want to do with the system before you do it. It's almost like how composers used to work, like real composers where, you know, you think in your head. You think, God, what do I want to do? What, what, you know, where do I want to go with this piece, right? So a really simple example of that is I play the cello really badly. I, I am one of the world's worst cello players. can never get the hang of it. But I still have a cello. So I just wanted to play with cello harmonics. You know, they create nice sounds. So I, I, I recorded really messily playing cello harmonics in different parts of the room. Took five minutes, slowed it down, stuck it into the system. Okay. And what you then end up with is something that you kind of haven't composed, 
but in itself is kind of an interesting piece. So, so this, is, this is just me playing cello really badly. Of course, being a of system, this will never loop. Uh, every time you play this, it will sound slightly differently. You'll never get any loop points in it. Another advantage of a system like this is sometimes you can take really short assets. Say you're in a part of a game and you don't have much bandwidth, you don't have much memory. Um, so you can, instead of composing a piece of music, you can rely on the logic of a system to do something for you. So again, this is a crude example, but I've got a little chord generator. This is not musically any good, but you'll hear what it's doing. And if you're looking wise, I've only got one sound. There's only one sample playing there. But it's just, it's just like you're playing on the keyboard. It's just pitch shifting it into chords. But of course, what I can do now, I'll just stop that for a second, is change the scale. I'll change it to alien. Why not? Have fun. Go wild. Now it's sounding darker, it's sounding a bit more dissonant. And so on. So the final thing I'll show you is I talked about, we, about having states. Okay. This is a, all these pieces I've created for the sake of this demonstration. Um, this is a kind of crazy busy piece. But it's to show you the, the, the state system we have. So on each of these channel panels, you have uh, interpolation settings. Okay. All that means is that I can define where and for how long, uh, when we're moving between two different pieces, the changes start to happen. So I say, look, these are the values over here, these are values over there. Don't start changing those values until you reach, reach a certain point. Okay. So what you'll see, I'm going I'm to shut up now. I'm going to play this. It's going to take about two minutes. And you'll see that the all the values will start to change. And the music will start to change with it. Okay, it will start to evolve and move into, into a different direction. I'm just using a timer, but this could be, as I said before, it could be tied into any kind of game, uh, game state. So I'll stop the transition now.
everyone falling asleep? Yes, someone's yawning. Okay, so that's all I have to show. So thank you for listening, but I'll take some questions now. Thank you.